Gold in the Ground, How Geologists Hunt for Hidden Wealth Introduction, Buried Riches, Buried Clues Gold is not just a metal. It's a symbol. It's been used to crown emperors, back economies, inspire migrations, and spark wars. But behind the symbolism lies the science, because before gold becomes jewelry or currency, it must first be found, and that story always begins in geology. Beneath the surface of our planet, in the fractures of ancient mountain belts and the hollows of long-extinct volcanoes, gold lies hidden. Not in shimmering nuggets like folklore might suggest, but often as invisible traces trapped in minerals, waiting to be uncovered. This is the story of how geologists, using everything from satellite data to microscopic analysis, locate Earth's most coveted element. Not by chance, but through knowledge, observation, and relentless investigation. Chapter 1 Understanding Gold's Geological Origins Gold is a rare element in the Earth's crust. It does not occur uniformly, and it doesn't form in a single way. To find it, one must understand where, and how, it forms. Formation in Hydrothermal Systems Most gold deposits originate from hydrothermal systems, where hot, mineral-laden water circulates deep underground. These fluids, often originating near magmatic intrusions, dissolve gold and other elements as they travel through rocks under high pressure and temperature. When these fluids enter cooler zones, they begin to deposit their contents. Gold, along with silica, iron, and sulfides, precipitates in fractures, faults, or porous rocks. This is how we get Orogenic gold deposits, linked to mountain building and regional metamorphism. Epithermal systems, shallow, volcanic-related. Porphyry systems, deep, large, often copper-rich with gold as a byproduct. Ancient deposits, the Archean Lode. Some of the world's richest gold fields, like those in the Canadian Shield or the Yilgarn Craton in Australia, are billions of years old. These are Archean greenstone belts, where gold formed during Earth's early tectonic and volcanic activity. Studying these ancient terrains helps geologists understand where to search today. Chapter 2 Surface Clues The Art of Geological Prospecting Gold rarely shows itself at the surface, but its fingerprints do. Geological Mapping A geologist's first task is to understand the rocks, their types, orientations, faults, folds, and alteration. By creating detailed geological maps, geologists trace the structural controls that may have guided mineralized fluids in the past. Key indicators include Quartz veins, especially those with iron staining, from oxidized sulfides. Shear zones or fault zones which acted as pathways. Hydrothermal alteration zones, such as sericitization or silicification. Geochemical sampling. Once a promising area is mapped, soil and rock sampling begins. Samples are analyzed for. Gold itself. Pathfinder elements like arsenic, AS, antimony, bismuth, and tellurium. These elements often travel with gold and hydrothermal fluids and can form broader geochemical halos around deposits, making them easier to detect. Geochemical anomalies can show up even when the gold is buried under cover, making this an essential early tool. Chapter 3 Seeing Beneath the Surface Geophysics in Exploration While geochemistry reveals chemical clues, geophysical techniques help visualize the subsurface in three dimensions. Common Geophysical Methods in Gold Exploration Induced Polarization, IP measures how rocks temporarily hold electrical charge, useful for detecting sulfide-rich zones. Magnetics, detects changes in the Earth's magnetic field caused by magnetic minerals associated with alteration. Gravity Surveys, identify density variations, potentially highlighting buried intrusive bodies or alteration zones. Integration with geological models. No method works in isolation. Geophysics complements surface mapping and geochemical data, and the goal is to build a coherent 3D model of the subsurface. Modern software enables geologists to overlay different data types and predict where to drill with high precision. Chapter 4 
Drilling, Proving the Invisible. The Role of Diamond Core Drilling. After all indirect evidence is compiled, drilling begins. Diamond drilling cuts through rock and retrieves long, cylindrical cores, which provide a direct look into the Earth's interior. These cores are logged meticulously, geologists describe the lithology, structure, mineralogy, and visible alterations. Special attention is paid to Vein density and thickness Sulfide content Alteration halos Mineralized zones with visible or invisible gold A saying for gold Cores are cut and sampled for fire assay or aqua regia digestion, which reveal the exact gold content, often measured in grams per ton, g t. Even values as low as 0.5 grams per ton can be economically viable in large, open pit settings. Drill results are the moment of truth. A single high-grade intersection can redefine an entire project. Chapter 5, From Discovery to Resource Modeling Building a Resource Estimate Using the results of tens or even hundreds of drill holes, geologists create a resource model, a 3D representation of gold distribution in the ground. It includes Ore geometry, shape and size of the deposit Grade distribution Tonnage estimates Software like Leapfrog Geo or Serpok turns raw data into interactive models. These are used by mining engineers to assess viability, design pits or underground stopes, and calculate potential profit. Economic feasibility and risk. Not all discoveries become mines. Even if gold is present, factors like metallurgy, how easy it is to extract, depth, local infrastructure, environmental restrictions, and community acceptance play critical roles. Geologists must work with economists, engineers, and regulators to evaluate whether a deposit is worth developing. Chapter 6, Famous Gold Discoveries and Lessons Learned History is filled with landmark discoveries. The Witwatersrand Basin, South Africa home to nearly 30% of all gold ever mined. The Carlin Trend, Nevada, USA A unique sediment-hosted gold belt with invisible gold locked in pyrite. The Super Pit, Kalgoorlie, Australia A massive open pit mine born from 19th-century prospectors' small claims. Each of these began with geological insight, often where others saw nothing. Modern gold discoveries increasingly come from undercover, deep beneath barren rock or sediments. The next generation of geologists must think in 3D, use advanced tools, and challenge old models. Chapter 7, Toward a Greener Gold Future Environmental Impact of Gold Mining Gold mining, especially in sensitive areas, can lead to Land disturbance Cyanide or mercury pollution Water usage and contamination Community displacement This has led to growing public concern, and rightly so. Sustainable exploration. Explorers are now expected to conduct baseline environmental assessments early. Minimize land disturbance with selective drilling. Use renewable energy and low impact logistics. Work closely with local communities and indigenous groups. Ethical, sustainable gold exploration isn't just a trend, it's the new standard. Conclusion The science behind the shine. Finding gold is a journey through time, stone, and science. It is not a matter of luck, it is a discipline built on centuries of geological understanding and modern technological tools. Geologists don't just look for gold, they interpret ancient events. They trace the movements of long-dead fluids, decipher fractures formed before the dinosaurs, and use chemistry to read the buried archives of Earth's crust. Gold may shine brightly, but it's the science behind it that truly dazzles.